High voltage DC transmission is one of the efficient method to transmit the electrical power. And a lot of people are talking about this in uh, in in recent days. Uh, people are talking whether HVDC is going to be the future of electrical transmission. In this video, we are going to talk about the different advantages that HVDC system offers. So let us start with the first and the most important advantage that HVDC offers is that the connection between the two power system having two different frequencies. Now when we talk about the HVAC, the fundamental requirement of connecting two different power system is to have the identical frequency. If the frequencies are not identical, then the connection is not possible. And this becomes a problem when you want to connect a country who is having 50 hertz frequency to a country who is having 60 hertz frequency. So with HVAC that connection is not possible. But HVDC offers that advantage and allows the connection between the two power system having two different frequencies. Because we are converting the power into the DC and DC don't have any concept called as frequency and hence the connection is possible or you can say the frequency of DC is zero. So the connection is possible between these two using the HVDC and that is the most important advantage of the HVDC system. And there are uh, such scenarios wherein you only have the option to go with HVDC. HVAC will not work in such scenarios. Then one of the key benefits of HVDC system is that the precise control of power flow. Now in HVAC, the power flow is like a running water. It will choose the least resistance path. And because of that, there is a high possibility that the, there will be unequal power distribution across the transmission network. But in case of HVDC, it offers a precise control over the power flow. So it can also create a stability in the system. A power system can be stabilized uh, with HVDC. That is again one of the very important advantage of the HVDC. The third important advantage is that there is no technical limitation on how much power you can transmit and how long you can transmit the power. In high voltage AC, the concept of inductance and capacitance comes into picture which for sure limit the power flow and the distance at which we can uh, transmit the power because of the significant amount of losses that happens. But in HVDC, uh, we don't talk about the inductance and capacitance because they, those are completely absent in the HVDC system. The only thing is there is the resistance, the Ohm's law. So for sure, Technically, there is no limitation on how much amount of power can be transmit and at a long distance, at what distance we can transmit that. There are projects already running which is transmitting bulk amount of power to a very, very long distance using the HVDC transmission link. And DC system as the frequency of DC system is zero, there is no skin effect present. So for sure, uh, the existing transmission system can be used in a better way. I will need thin conductors uh, to transmit the DC power because there is no skin effect. So all my current will utilize the complete diameter of the conductor and it will not only flow from the surface of the conductor, which is the problem with HVAC transmission. So this is again one of the big advantage. There is no skin effect. So I'm utilizing my existing power plants, existing structure of power system in a better way, in an efficient way with HVDC. And since the, there is no capacitance and inductance present, the losses, the number of losses in the HVDC is much, much lower than the HVAC system. HVAC, the number of losses, especially the transmission losses are very high. HVDC, that losses is very less. 
And even if you increase the length of the transmission line, the losses will remain constant. It will not increase with increase in the transmission line length. So that is uh, again one of the important advantage that HVDC offers over HVAC. HVDC also allows us to make the power flow bi-directional. So what do I mean if I am utilizing a back-to-back -back converters, back-to-back -back, uh, HVDC system, then I can transmit power from one system to another system and vice versa as well with the existing infrastructure. So I will need, I don't have to add any additional equipment or devices to do that. I can utilize the existing available infrastructure and make the power flow in both the directions. So either I can transmit from one system to another or that another system to my previous system without any worry. That is not possible in case of HVAC system. Now, since the losses is reduced in HVDC, we are utilizing the existing power system in a better way. The overall energy transmission efficiency increases with that. It definitely improves. I will be using the power generated in a better way because there are less losses. So for sure, my overall efficiency of the transmission system will increase. That is not the case with HVAC because in HVAC, there is significant amount of losses that we need to consider. Uh, in the transmission network. Plus the HVDC is environment friendly. And what do I mean by that? Uh, for one, the tower design. HVDC's tower design is much more simplified than the HVAC. We need less amount of steel and the land required to build that uh, tower to make it stand is also less. So the right of way topic is also addressed somewhat in case of HVDC. And since I'm also utilizing uh, the existing infrastructure in a better way, uh, I need not to add more towers or more networks in the system, which will for sure uh, be helpful for the environment. Now, of course, uh, it's not 100% environment friendly, but if we compare it with the HVAC, then for sure uh, the points for environment friendliness goes to HVDC. And another important advantage that HVDC offers is that when we talk about the cables, especially if we are uh, putting the cables underground uh, through the sea, in HVAC, the capacitance of these cables is huge. And because of that, uh, the additional current must flow to satisfy that uh, charging current. And that causes uh, the losses, the heating will increase, and that puts a limitation on the amount of power that you can transmit via the cable and the length of the cable as well. So in such scenarios, the HVDC plays a very important role. HVDC, of course, there will be certain losses, but it is not as, as high as the HVAC. So in many projects in Europe and North America, uh, the recommendation still goes for HVDC for putting the submarine uh, cables via the sea and uh, use the cables with HVDC transmission so that the losses goes down and uh, there is no impact on the transmission capacity. So that is also uh, one of the important advantage of HVDC. So those were some of the advantages of uh, the HVDC and for sure uh, no system is perfect. Okay, we saw a lot of advantages of HVDC. Certainly, there are some major drawbacks, some major disadvantages also uh, present in the HVDC. Now, what are those disadvantages? We are going to talk about that in the next video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the update of that particular video. So right, that's all for this video, guys. If you find this video helpful, then do like and do comment helpful in the comment section below so that I will understand this type of content is helping you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Till then, keep watching, keep learning.